This episode of After Dark is sponsored by Shutterstock.com with over 20 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips. Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, head on over to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code GAMEBREAKER6. GAMEBREAKER TV What's up, everybody, and welcome back to After Dark, the live call-in show where you guys call in live every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. PDT. My name is Mike Shaftnin, and it's one of those nights, not advocating drinking, but oh my gosh, it's going to be needed for tonight. Joining me tonight, unfortunately, we know, uh, Lore Master Lore is no longer with us, so joining me for the time being is the one, the only... The big man himself, the good GG, beating me to the punch, Mr. Gary Gannon. It's gonna be one of those nights. I can already, I can already tell. Oh, these are I, IPAs. You don't want to chug these. These are IPAs. But this is. You ready to do this? We good now? We in? No echo? Sure. All right. What's up, chat room? Hello, hello, hello. All right, let's do this. Hello. All right, so this isn't the first time Gary's been on the show. He's filled in for me a couple times, so he's used to it. Uh, let's just open up the lines, get right to this, go right to it. I think we got a familiar you're face. Not gonna, you're not even going to talk about the fact that I'm in a shed? We could like, talk about the fact that you're in a shed. I mean, it's, we, we, lost, we lost Josh, and we decided that the next best thing was Gary Gannon in a shed. Yeah, so my, my studio becomes the storage closet at Game Record TV. Thanks so much. You know, I, I'm pretty sure when we started this show, we decided that I get the pretty set, and hey, you man, just get kind of pushed to the side. It's <laughs> this your is... show, bro. <laughs> I'm the only one who's still on it. I'm the only re re repeating host at this point. Hey, I don't know. Let's go. Let's let's go ahead and open up the lines, get the show moving, and just see how it goes. Caller, you're on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. No, you're hey, not. Because what's for up? whatever. Oh, all right. Someone is out there. All right. Skype just messed up. Hey, Zista. Hey. I know exactly who going? that voice is. Mm hmm. Gary, are you going to grow your hair out to compete with uh, Josh now that he's gone? Uh, that would be an absolute no. <laughs> oh, come on. I think the fans want to see that. Those days are long behind me. I used to have mm. my hair long. It was really long. It was like down past my shoulder. Didn't you have like a rat was... tail? No, I was not Richard Garriott. That is a completely different person. <laughs> and so not you cannot confuse my long, luscious locks of getting a, looking like a hot chick with Richard Garriott's whip tail plus fifty whip tail. <laughs> that thing's wow. enchanted, you know. Enchanted with what? Plus two to plus just just plus fifty. Yeah, no, plus fifty. Not <laughs> just two, plus 50. fifty. Not not even plus not 50. even to anything. Not even to anything. It's just plus fifty. Dude, if you take a Richard Garriott whip tail to the face, forget it. It's like a lashing. It's like you just, you just cut you. Just cut a bitch. Done. Zista, always good to hear from you, man. How you been? Pretty good. And yourself? Wonderful. Uh, what do you got for us tonight? Well, with uh, both E3 and Nintendo Direct coming up next Tuesday, I was wondering what games you were excited for and maybe are expecting them to actually announce at E3. Oh, gosh. So much coming out of E3. Uh, E3, can't wait to go. Uh, I know Wild Star is going to be there. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of hyped up to see the Wild Stars. Just I'm not even being subtle hyped. about it. Just like talking away, pouring another glass. What? Nothing. After dark. What? <laughs> Nothing. I am uh, enjoying a port brewing anniversary ale. If anybody's wondering, because I've been banished to the closet, and yes, that's what we do. We drink when we're in the closet. I'll be coming out of the closet soon. One of these days when maybe after, I don't know. <laughs> so E3, what are you looking forward to? What what's got your interest peaked? Uh definitely Wildstar. Wildstar is like I feel like Wildstar is the MMO. It's like I haven't felt this in a long time amongst the MMO community. It's like one of those games that, you know 
have to compare it to anything. It's almost like I got. I, I can only compare it to like what it felt like for Rift. Nobody knew who, what Rift was, and I know there's hard for people out there who are following Wildstar Store, just like there's hard for people following Rift. But it was like this game that all of a sudden crept up, and then all of a sudden everybody's getting all excited, and they're like, "Oh my god, everything sounds good. Everything sounds good." So I think Wildstar is definitely on the top of my list of games to check out at um, E3. I think. Um, now I'm gonna say close second, but now I'm gonna go with the first. No, I think I'm more excited about something else. I gotta be honest. Yeah. Well, what's the is this show about honesty? This show is about 100 percent bullshit, and then oh, a point okay. one percent honesty and cheesecake. Then, you can't forget. Then I'm probably I don't know excited about Hungry Pirates Mobile 101. I don't know what that game is. I just made it up. So sounds like it sounds like a great game. Hungry Pirates 101. Hungry yeah. Pirate Wizards 101. Yeah, King's Isle is not making the game. That's uh, from Ganon Publications, and look for it. No, I think um, I think I'm actually most excited. I think a lot of our game breaker people are gonna be like, "Oh, turn coat Ganon, blah blah blah." Um, I really want to see Destiny. Man. I really want to see Destiny. I think as far as like, just I don't know. I think it's just you know the trailers are cool and the last trailers are gameplay, but I, I just want to see what they have to show. I can't wait to see Destiny. I think that that's gonna probably be the number one on my list. Wildstar, close second. Um, I'm trying to think what are the, the big... I mean, we don't really cover the console stuff so much. I know you're I mean, really that's, excited about I, going to you know check out the uh, Xbox. Who do you think is winning this year, by the way? PS4 or, or Xbox? Nintendo, because they're so cool oh. they're not even going to have their own conference. Um, gosh. I, I, here's the thing. is, is I, think it, I think that the tough thing of, of who's winning is... Uh, there, there's obviously the fanboy side of things. I think in a, in a general consumer place, PlayStation's winning. I, I don't think th there was a lot of people going into I the agree. Xbox conference that were expecting them to blow PlayStation out of the water because everybody was so let down by PlayStation's conference. Like it was three hours long. They didn't show the console. How could you just? How could you do a conference more wrong than PlayStation? And then Xboxes came out, and everybody they didn't even suddenly show the console. <laughs> Everybody suddenly 180'd and 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 now they think that that I, I think that PlayStation's got the public edge. Uh, Microsoft, as as you've said to me many times when I've come in, they didn't expect the the backlash from the community during their conference as they did. So they've got a lot they're gonna have to step up and prove. There's a lot of negativity uh around the always online gaming aspect of it. Big uh time. the connects always eye open being open in your your living room or wherever um there's there's a lot of negativity surrounding that, it and the gamers that, feel slighted has that been clarified because i believe that like the camera thing being on is not really necessarily the camera's going to be on but like the gesture motion sensor sort of situation is going to be on so it's not i don't think it's going to be like on like taking naked pictures of you while you're getting it on with your chick it's going to be or fapping because you have the cameras on it's going to be more like <laughs> motion sensor thing so it's like you know if you did something for your tv to like do something it would like work i feel like that's what they're going for i, don't I know, mean I, I, think, think, I think i think they i think they missed it though this year i think their big misstep was a that that messaging was just bad it was like so big brother that it scared the hell out of everybody and two it was like they went really soft for gamers right they like talked about entertainment and tv and shows and media center and I think gamers were just sort of like real gamers were kind of put off by it a little bit. Just like, hey, what about me? What about me? Like, okay, Sony seems like they're actually paying attention to me. Developers are actually saying good things about PS4 and developing on it, and that they're really paying attention to what they need as far as like making them happy. And I think I think right now, especially if you're a gamer, I don't know. I mean, I still think the Xbox is going to sell well. It's going to get some good titles, of course. But I think in their messaging, I think. It's and I think, I mean, I, I, I think PlayStation, um, it, it, PlayStation ran into the issue, like I said, where, where they kind of felt like they were running long, but PlayStation has the, the gamer edge because of their approach with um, showing games at the conference. Yes, it extended the amount of time that they were up there, but now, like, Xbox, right now, people are like, okay, all I've got is... Um, Call of Duty and EA game and sports games. That's it. But it, but at least you know even even as much as I hated the fact of Final Fantasy as a brand director coming up and saying, "Hey, be cited for E3 because we're going to announce a new title." It was like, "Come on, just tell me the title now." But the it, it still got me kind of a little bit excited to wait for E3 to hear about the games that were coming out at E3. I didn't really get that any of that excitement or any of those teases 
that left me waiting for for consoles, uh, console games, or, or any games that are coming up at E3 from Xboxes. So what are you most looking forward to at, X- at E3? Because we are going to E3, and we are First covering time. E3. First time. You and I are going, Pop and we're it. covering it. Pop we're doing a lot of coverage. We my E3 chair. We everybody now. Yes, popping the staff I... E3 chair. And we're going to cover a ton. we got work to do, bro. People need to see content ridiculous ridiculous amount of work to we've do got, cover right. anything got except got for tv rigs. and movies what's that sister cover everything cover. but tv and movies uh, yes what do you is this what do you what are you mostly excited about for e3 i'm actually kind of interested to see what xbox is going to bring to the table just because we haven't heard much in the terms of their games uh i know rare has actually uh announced that they're gonna launch a historic ip so out of that I can think of four off the top of my head, which would be Perfect Dark, Killer Instinct, Banjo Kazooie, and Conquer. Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I'd like to mm-hmm. see one Perfect of those Dark titles come back. Awesome. I'd love to see Perfect Dark come back. Do we? Do or, uh, we've had a lot of people? Uh, I, I know a lot of people that have been playing the the adventure classic games: Banjo Kazooie, Donkey Kong, Conquers. Do 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 you think gamers still receive those types of titles? Well, or is that I, I, age coming past? Am I terrible to say that I, I don't like those games anymore? I hate them. Like I don't, I don't know. I well, that's don't what I'm saying. Like, is, I, is, is that era no, of, of I, I that actually of, being? I think, lot, I think a lot of gamers still love them. I think a lot of gamers still like those games. I don't know. I'm not. I just it's not my type of game. I don't know. I mean, back in the day when like Donkey Kong was like you know a big box that you put a quarter in. Sure, I was down. I was playing. Yeah, well, arcade really. Ganon over there. But. I don't know. They're just not. They're not my thing. Is I, I haven't. I don't own a Wii. I haven't owned a Nintendo product in quite a long time, and they just tend to make a lot of those games. I don't know. I agree with Zista. I, I'm really curious to see what Xbox is going to come out with because I think that the backlash that they got from the media, especially, and it's not just like even from Game Bear. Like, I mean, every media site I mean, almost across the board kind of had something to say about their messaging and the and the, and the announcement. I think they're going to really go back to kind of refocus. And, Sort of hone in and, and probably deliver um, something we were a little bit more hoping for from uh, the actual announcement. So I agree. I think it's going to be more game focused, probably a little more focused at the hardcore gamer and uh, just kind of like stuff that we kind of really care about. Maybe less about the TV stuff, which I think is cool. Like I'm not against all the TV stuff. Like I'm not against my next box maybe becoming like a set top box. I, I, just, I just don't feel like that's why I buy the Xbox. Real quick on, uh, just to, to wrap up this whole E3 kind of expectation, I think a lot of people are expecting price points to, to maybe come out at E3. I was seeing numbers that people were expecting the PlayStation to be 750 and the Xbox 800 plus. Do you guys, do do either Ooh. of you think that those numbers are actually Ow, legitimate? No. Exactly. No way. No, I think that's really? way too Is high. That, I'm going to say 499 on both. Yeah, I was thinking about the $500 range myself. I mean, like I said, I was. I'm just referring to to a a article based that was analyzing what they were offering and the tech specs that were within them. Um, I'm not saying that that's my estimation, but you know what they'll do? They'll probably they'll probably take a loss on the initial run for the first year. Like I think a lot a lot of times they do that with consoles is that they'll actually sell them at a loss and make up for it on the software and gaming side. Um, so yeah, maybe some of the technology in those boxes are worth more than that. But man, eight hundred bucks for christmas like who's got that in this economy like no well that's that's what it was back when playstation 3 originally launched and so many people were against it and up in arms that that it didn't yeah, sell that, well that's, that's when people were like holding people up at like walmart like at gunpoint like trying to get a ps3 back give me your give me your ps3 no it's that's absolutely crazy um all right unfortunately we're we're kind of getting to the time for this Zista, do you have anything else for us I was just curious what if you thought the uh, the connect the the new capture feature how that's going to capture the uh, the flowingness of your yellow dress. Well, they they do boast that it's I think 1080p now, so it can pick up individual colors and no and no colors. longer segregate from race. So hopefully, it'll be able to capture every pixel of my moving dressed as I spin around in circles. I'm glad there's trolling on this show, but it's friendly trolling. It's like we're a bunch of bros coming. trolling each other. <laughs> the, 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 he's trolling me, but this is coming from the guy who's got a yellow dress in his backdrop of the set that he has. 
Yeah, it, it's sitting behind <laughs> me right now. Actually, if you look, Chef, I tweeted you a picture. Check it out. I, all right, let's see here. I don't know if I've got it. Uh, I don't have it off the top. I'll have to. I'll, I'll bring it up and try and find it before the show. Uh, Somebody said eight hundred so. was the Atari Jaguar. How about the three DO? Three DO was like eight hundred bucks. Took that was like back. All right, listen, listen, Mister. I played games back when there were arcade games. Inflation's changed. Games aren't eight hundred dollars anymore. You're the one who's quoting <laughs> the eight hundred dollar number. What do you? What you, you just know, about the I, honestly, the, the fact that I just said that it com goes completely reverse of what I said because inflation would actually make the eight hundred dollars that they cost More. back then like a thousand or so. I know that was I, I didn't think before I tried to to ridicule you or make fun of you, but it didn't work. You went for it, bro. Right. <laughs> I, tr I tried. I was reaching, but I tried. Uh, all right, Zesta, thank you so time. much. For that uh for that question here um we're gonna throw over to a twitter question and move on while we get another person on the line need more loot wanted to know are indie games too cheap or triple a games too expensive ignoring the free-to-play cash grabs that's a good that's a pretty good uh question indie games too cheap first off i don't think indie games are ever too cheap because I think that indie games need to, especially to rival the AAA market, they've got to be on the more economic end in order to make that sale. That's that's yeah, why indie have, games have, have boomed as much as, as they have. That's a really hard question, right? Because indie games range from like $2 to 20 to 30 Like, Let's go mid-range. Let's go mid-range indie game and just kind of speculate from there. What, 20 is $20 too much? 15 to 20. Or... We'll, go, we'll go 15 to 20. And cheap end, I would assume cheap end of free to play okay. or, or, or indie being like five. I don't know. That sounds perfect to me. I don't know. <laughs> That's, I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's a problem with the pricing structure at all. I guess, I guess maybe on the maybe on the triple A, I, I guess I'd like to see some games maybe come in at like the $40 range that like kind of sell themselves as triple A games, but don't really come in and don't really kind of hit the mark for a triple A game. Um, those are the games I usually try and pick up on the Steam sale, and usually they go on sale really quickly after launch. You pick them up for twenty dollars cheaper. They probably should launch at twenty. I think indie games are usually. I don't know. I've never. I've, I've honestly, I don't think I've ever felt slighted by an well, indie sounds... purchase and price. But I do. I have felt slighted by some AAA games. That sounds that, like there's what... that. There's that stigma. There's that stigma for games to like if they want to be AAA, they've got to charge sixty bucks, right? Or maybe sometimes fifty. But you can't really charge forty because now you're looked at as like you know stepchild and then nobody wants to play your game. so it sounds like you're kind of leaning on the side of triple a games being too expensive because that's something that i'm kind of even falling into now you know i waited um i the glowing reviews about bioshock infinite um i've been a halo fan since the original one came out um and just about a week ago i i finally picked up both because i finally had good deals i think i got bioshock got for Elon. like 20 30 bucks and and halo for under 20 like i think i got halo for 18 um and and it's it's one of those things where it's it's just kind of like why why purchase it and i mean i get it like you've been waiting for it it's really exciting you want to get it when everybody else is is involved in playing in it but i don't know for me i'm just finding that i want to play those triple a games but i don't want to play at the 60 dollar price point i've waited three because... years to get it i can wait another four or five months till a sale happens so I'm not like that. I had to play Bioshock the second it came out, which is amazing, and I'm glad I paid 60 bucks for it and completely happy with it. Definitely not one of those games that I felt fell in that category. But I wonder if you feel like that, and if a lot of people are feeling like that now, because the quality of indie games is actually getting so good, and there's so much fun at a lower price point at this point, which we never really had before, right? Like, we didn't really have mm -hmm. that. We just had, like, games. games were priced as games, and that was it. It was games. We didn't really have, necessarily, a lot of indie games being priced. And now... I think a lot of indie developers are making like some amazing stuff and you're having a ton of fun and now you're second guessing the AAA titles and the cost that we're spending on. You think that has I'm, something to do with it? Probably. Well, I think I and I think that's the, that's very similar in the sense of the sudden free to play boom. You know, the same can be said for subscription versus free to play as India is the AAA because the the quality of free to play has been risen so high that people are no longer willing to pay a subscription for a game of the same, or maybe just a little bit better caliber. And we're, we're seeing that. I think that's, that's, it's tough because it's tough for the industry. And I think we're seeing that across the board is a lot of game developers um, and staff across the board are, are laying off people. So I think it's difficult for them, but I think for the gamer, it's great 
to see this kind of competition happen because that can only mean higher quality games, hopefully for a cheaper price. You know, Jordan, I mean, as I'm watching chat room, I'm trying to keep an eye on chat room. I feel like that's this show is probably like that. Um, and snores a lot. Says I won't pay sixty dollars for a game that takes ten hours or less to finish. And that's pointless. No way. So I, I'm on the opposite end. I actually hate this. Like, I am completely okay with spending sixty dollars on a game that's like seven hours. Like, I honestly feel like Bioshock could have chopped three hours out of that game, and it would have been a tighter, you better can't, game. And you I can't bring up. Fine. You can't bring up Bioshock because I'll agree with you because that game was amazing for its story. But like, right, but what I'm saying is like, I hate I hate the fact that game developers they and they, this is something within the game developer community that that definitely takes place is that they know that if they want to charge a certain price for their product, they do know that they have to clock in at a certain number of hours. And I I personally as a gamer actually hate that. I I would rather be told a great story and have it be shorter and chopped down. And still pay the sixty dollars to have experience. I don't. I don't necessarily feel like but quantity I think, of content should should even come ever anywhere near how much you charge for a game. I think the problem is though is that the consumer is very skeptical of paying sixty dollars unless they know they're going to get their money's worth. Because that's what the yeah, argument no, no, no. is. I mean, essentially, yeah. you're paying sixty dollars for. You're, you're saying Bioshock was about seven you wanted it to be seven or, or you got through it in seven because that's pretty fast if you got through it in seven no i can't remember what i got it through it in. it was it was upwards of over 10 i feel like i got it maybe through it in 12 i don't have to check my steam account but i think i got it maybe like 12 i've played it a little bit slow but i feel like you could have told that story in like seven you could have done a really tight seven there was a there was a midway point where i think almost a lot of people agree that like there's just a little bit of fat and i feel like sometimes that fat gets gets put into the game where you're just you're just going through more gameplay, especially when it's a story driven game like that. You're just going through more gameplay, but not necessarily having that amazing experience. Because I don't know. I personally just I felt like there was this point where it was like it was awesome, it was awesome, 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 awesome. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh my god, this just feels like I'm doing the same thing. And then all of a sudden it got awesome again. And then it was over. I was like, hmm. okay, they just could have, they could have chopped like three, four. Hours. I don't know. I just I do think that they keep that in the back of their mind and they know they have to hit like that 12 to 14 hour mark on like an RPG story driven game, especially at least in that realm of time frame for a gamer to spend 60 bucks on before they're going to get like slammed for it. And I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I think that kind of, I guess I kind of think that that hinders the art a little bit and the storytelling. And I think like from a writer's perspective, I think the writer would be happy if like, man, we could just tell the story in six hours and it would be awesome. And the, and the, the, the gamer's experience would just be so solid. I still pay 60 bucks for it. I still would pay 60 bucks for it. Hmm. All right, well, let's move on. But before I do, uh, I can't believe I completely skimmed over the most important part of this Twitter question. Hashtag say no, to cheese. say no to cheesecake. All right, let's move on to Game Breakers. Uh, next caller, call here on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from. Tell us your question and chat with us. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Awesome. All right. My name is Ben. I'm uh, from San Diego. And uh, what else did you ask? <laughs> uh, ben, in the SD. We're like an hour, we're like three hours away, bro. SD. We, we, oh, yeah, we can go definitely. party together. Like right now. Oh, how, how, if you don't mind, if you thing is, me, how old are you? How old are you? We don't have to ask. I'm 19. But uh, oh, thing is, I'm a little <laughs> bit tired for a, for yeah. a certain reason. But, uh, you know, um, you know, <laughs> late show. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask but, the uh, reason, but. <laughs> Late show, <clears throat> but uh, now my question is: uh, What do you think about independent donation-run MMO projects? Like um, one off the top of my head is a uh, Star Wars Galaxies emulator. Uh, hmm. Like, what do you think about those kind of pro like uh, pro community-run projects where they're trying to, I guess, recreate dead or uh, canceled MMOs? All right. It's Star Wars Galaxy, you just, I hope you know you just opened a can of worms. Here we go. I, know. Really I, I did. I did. He knows that he I know for a fact I did. Um, so, I, to be honest, I've never, ever, ever checked out SWG. You know? so like, I know tons of people have turned me on to him. like, you know, there's a pre-NGE, like, Star Wars Galaxies emulator, blah, blah, blah. blah. And I'm like, ah, I'm just. Yeah. That game was better as a memory for you. <laughs> I think it was definitely, 
I mean, it was about what the game created, but it was also about the people I played with at the time. It was about the experiences we had. It was about what we made of that game. I don't know. I mean, it was funny because actually this came up today, which I actually want, I should find out more about this because I was surprised to hear. Um, if you guys don't watch Monty's Minute, uh, the next episode is coming out actually tomorrow from this live taping. Uh, Monty actually mentioned, he talked about this for a quick second, and he made a quick mention that from what he hears, um, people behind the scenes don't have a problem with SWB either. I think because they like to see that it's still living on and going on, but uh, I don't know. It's a touchy situation. I don't know if I, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't think private servers or emulators or any of that stuff is really like too legit. I mean, it doesn't really, it doesn't really, the problem with it is, right, is that the people who, who, I know the game is dead, so it's not like the people who created it are really going to reap their benefits of it, but at the same time, there's like some semi-shady like dude like, you know, hosting a bunch of servers somewhere, collecting money sometimes and stuff like that from other people to play this game that is no part of, while all these devs are like, you know, pouring their heart and soul into some other game. So, I don't know. I don't really support private servers or emulators or things like that. As much as I'd really- love to think that if I went back to the SWG emu that I'd have those same kinds, probably not. And I think that's that's what it is. I mean, there's private servers in general. There's there's a lot that exists. And I think that part part of the the biggest thing about when we think back to how good games were, it's a nostalgia. Uh, it, first off, it's just that it's nostalgia. Second off, especially with MMOs, we have to consider the fact of the environment. I could go back and play and find a private server for Burning Crusade. Uh, and play with all the same rule sets, but but honestly, it wouldn't be that that experience that I remember if I wasn't sitting there playing with the exact guild that I was with, playing with all the people on this private server, um, kind of making it its own. And and I, I don't think the experience will be the same. I almost think you'll you'll rob yourself of of the the feelings you had towards it because it, it's agree. not going to be the same experience as as what you remember. Because as Gary said. The, for for a perfect example, um, for a project I'm working on, I had to find some World of Warcraft private servers, uh, and I was working on trying to go through different questing zones, and the quests are broken. Granted, that's not going to change my experience, but it's not like I can go back and experience these things the way they were. They're broken. The only thing that I I find with these private servers are, are people, like Gary said again, looking for people who are holding the servers to try and raise a little bit of money by offering, you know, fast level ups or, or special donations or, or trying to recreate that perfect PVP environment. And that's all it is. Like you're, you're, you're just isolating one aspect of it, but you're forgetting the fact that the, the, the game was so magical. The, the nostalgia you have for it is far more than just the aspect of playing the game. It was who you played it with. It was when you played it. It was where you at, where we're at in a certain point in your life. Like, I can't play the same way that I played in college, so I can't play for 15, 20 hours on end on a, on a Friday night. Like it just, it, it doesn't, it, it's it, a private server won't encapsulate my memory. It, it will just ruin it. This is actually why this is like a weird like, side note, but this is almost why like I very, very, very rarely ever, ever go see bands doing reunion tours. Like almost never. Like I, it's like almost something I'm again because a lot of the times I've seen the bands live and I remember those concerts. I'm like, wow, that was an amazing night. Those guys were awesome. And usually when I go back and see them a couple of years later, I'm like, wow, that wasn't so good. And it kind of, kind of tarnished my uh, memory of like, you know, when I originally saw them. So I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of emulators or private servers or any of that stuff. I, there's plenty of good games out there that have good experience, especially in the MMO escape with other people that you're friends with and kind of have new experiences. I just think it's awesome that people have those memories. I mean, I, I draw an SWG all the time, right? Like, I have stories at the Wazoo about SWG. It's like, my thing, it's like, every, I mean, there's a drinking game about SWG when I bring it up with the chat. So I bring it up a lot, but at the same time, it's like, those, most of those stories are about because of the exact group of people I was playing with at the time and the situation we were in. I guarantee if I went on an emulated server and gave some guys some donations, like, none of those things would happen. You know, Z- Zedga, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, uh, X X Diga in chat is kind of saying something he's saying that I nailed on 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 the head exactly what he was saying, but he had a really good comment. Um, he said we need to look towards the future, let go of the past, and I think that's that's exactly it. Like the past was great, it was wonderful, 
but stop. We need it. We and, and myself included, because I, I get this way about specific games. We we do. We need to let go of the past and look towards what future games are, are going to bring to the table and how they can make a new experience for us, for us. Because I guarantee you, part of my experience of of Star Wars The Old Republic, of Guild Wars, uh, of Mists of Pandaria, even all these these new MMO experience are destroyed. Not destroyed, but they are they're taken down because I'm trying to relive my memory of the first time I played instead of enjoying the the moment that I'm in. MMOs, I don't know. Uh, MMOs, the, the little thing about MMOs, I tell you, but it's about the social. It is about MMOs are so much about more about the friends that you play with than the game. Because I have played some broken ass MMOs way longer than I ever should have with people because they made the game awesome. I'm all about people. That's why I like I tend to like kind of like sandboxy games a little bit more in the MMO space because I feel like they create more interaction with people. They create that like environment where you make some super awesome friends and you actually play together. Not to say that newer games don't. Not to say that theme parks don't do that. Absolutely do. You know, there's tons of rating groups out there like loving it, having a great time. But Yes, mechanics and all that stuff have a big part of that way. For sure, 100%. But the friends that you're playing with in an MMO are, can eclipse that so much more than the actual gameplay. Definitely. All right, let's move on and open up the lines again and see what else we can talk about. Caller, you're on the line with Gamebreaker After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Hey, Mike, it's uh, Rich from Breckenridge. Yo, Rich, good to have you back. Um, as uh, just to comment on the on the nostalgia thing, nostalgia and and the, the biggest problem with it is the rose colored glasses. You remember everything much better than when you go back and then suddenly the graphics are different. The people aren't there, and you just feel kind of empty because it's you it's all it's kind of gone. Right? That's that's true too. Yeah, the the, the stuff that would be that. you like, want to go would... like punch someone. When people bring up SWG, like, I completely admit that. Like, I'll talk about all the amazing features it had and what it did, blah, 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 blah. But I will, I will completely leave out how terrible the code was and how broken it was and how many times it crashed and how many exploits there were. Like, it was a mess. The game was a disaster. Yet, I'll leave all that stuff out and just look at it through Rose Cutter last. But I kind of know that, but I agree with you completely. Sorry, I sidetracked your question. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I brought it back up. <laughs> no worries. No worries. That's what it's about. It's about what talking is, to you what, guys. What, what, what game has what game has that for you actually? Uh, for me, it's for me, it's EverQuest. When I tried going back to it, I can't remember when it was, um, but I tried going back to it, and I'm playing it, and I'm I just felt devoid of of any joy that I that I had when I originally played it. I just everything you play, you just felt. Did you play when it launched? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I I was. So you were. Uh, so you remember? Was that your first MMO? Uh no. First my my first graphical MMO. I played Muds too. My first graphical one was uh, Ultima Online. Oh wow! So you uh, you played that. EQ was my first one. So like that was like that moment of just like. <gasps> See, I must That's be. I must be a. I must be a masochist then, because I've mentioned Tibia being my first MMO, and granted, I admit it's not a great game by any means like still today but like i could go back i i've logged into that game and been like oh like if i and again kind of like you said gary it's about it's about people and community if i had people who wanted to play that game i'd still be down to play it i don't know i i, I don't i don't necessarily like i i, I, I guess, I guess be, but again you could get your same group of friends back and kind of go back and play that game today and uh, you know you've uh, you've also moved on i mean game design has changed it has, in a lot of ways, gotten for the gotten gotten better, and a lot mm -hmm. of gamers don't want to think that. And there there are certain things about old school gaming that I do think are better than new school gaming, but it's a give and take. There are a lot of things that games and MMOs especially have just done that are amazing compared to what we had last year. Again, rose colored glasses, right? We forget all the bad stuff. We forget, you know, how fucking horrible trains were in each yeah. corpse dragging. Corpse dragging. Corpse dragging. I mean, exactly, exactly. So, I don't know, all right, Rich, what do you got for us? Um, this, this. By the way, I can't. I, I, I hate to do this, but I hate that Wild Star show name. I can't help it. I just <laughs> don't like it. I don't <laughs> like it. 
I Unicorns don't... are shadow popping, motherfuckers! <laughs> so that's how I want to say it every time, but I just don't do that on any other show. But that's how I kind of want to say it. <laughs> do people Unicorn not, do people not... popping! Wait, do people not get the reference? Like, dude, I, I don't want to spell it out, but I'm going to have to spell it out. So here's the story. And Josh Allen, okay. R.I.P. Josh Allen. I'm not here anymore. <laughs> we're not my homie. Um, he came up with the name. And it was when we... we I wanted to use that. I, I liked, I went through all the, the Wildstar artwork and I was going through all the artwork. And it was a bunch of screenshots and like cool shots and like, you know, screen, like the, the wallpapers and stuff. And then we came across that one. And it was the, actually the only like flat 2D kind of like image that I saw. And I was like, wow, this looks really cool. It's a kind of retro, it's 2D, Game Breakers like styles kind of 2D and the logo and stuff. I, was like, I think that's, that's the image we should use for the show. And I posted it and I was like, we need a name. And like some bad names were getting thrown around. And I threw it into our, our, our internal chat for all the Game Breaker people to read. And people were like, Wild Stars with the Z was actually high up on the list at that point. So it wasn't that good. Um, and then Josh just went, look at his, he didn't even say look at his hand. But if you look at his hand, he's doing like, I can't even do it. Like something like this. And he's making like a unicorn duck shadow puppet. <laughs> he said it looks like a unicorn duck shadow puppet. I was like, that's it. That's it. That's the name. It's ridiculous. That's totally ridiculous. Hang on. Sorry. I'm so sorry you don't so like the name. wait. Th this is this is not only the name, but it's the gang sign now for the show. Like you apparently, get, like, people don't see it, but the no, character your, image it's your is middle doing finger, Gary. Whatever. <laughs> that one. You fold your one. middle yes, finger that. over. Yeah, that one. So <laughs> apparently, people don't see it. Puppet gang. That's <laughs> so that's where it came from, and I thought it was hilarious. And whatever. What are we gonna call it? Wild Star Cast. <laughs> sorry, sorry if you don't. I, I, I'm sorry if you don't like the name. I don't know. I'm on, I'm on a tangent of like crazy names. We also called the show Derpy Dragon this week. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. Anyway, the question actually was uh, Carbine uh, saying that there's going to be no enemy telegraphs in PvP. Mm -hmm. um, I'm indifferent. I'm I'm not a huge PvP person. But do you think that will be a discouraging thing for the PvPers that really wanted that? Or an encouraging now, thing for the people that really did not want to have to deal with the telegraphs to try and do it more on Twitch and reflex rather than seeing it coming. Now, I'm sorry. Um, actually, if, if you don't mind, can you define telegraphs for me? Just so that I'm... Right. Telegraphs, uh, placemats. Uh, basically, They're if you think of, of targeting red pool that you put on the ground. Hmm, okay. They basically taint... So, so in PvE, I'm in Wildstar... Mr. Shaftnit, we'll school you now. Um, it paints basically like, you know, cones, um, a forward arrow, circling arrows. Almost think of it as a little bit, I don't want to say a mini game because it's not a mini game, but it's almost as if the mob is giving you indications of what it's going to do next. And as you progress through the game, it's getting more difficult and more difficult to actually read. I'm going to kind of compare it to like DDR. Or Guitar Hero, but think I think League it's of a more than that. Yeah, but you, well, yeah, but you don't, you don't really see that. You, if the if the enemy team could see I think where I, your I, stuff I, is going to get cast out, that's what the kind of what they would see. Except that it's kind of a an opaque colored red kinda. cone or sure. whatever. Yeah. So the thing is, in Wildstar, like in all the PVE stuff, you're going to see a lot of this from all the mobs and stuff. We're going to have these telegraph system, and then when you get into PVP. They've been on the fence a bit, and I think that they've tried it, from what I can tell from the statements, it sounds like they've tried it in internal testing to actually let you see the opponents in PvP's telegraphs. I'm not sure if they've actually have, but I'm making that up, but I'm assuming they may have. And they've actually decided not to put the telegraph system into PvP. See, I don't know. I think, I think might, that's... I think, I, th I think what happened, so there's two things. We talked about this on Unicorn Duck, Duck Shadow Puppet. Let's say that name again. Um, and... I guess it could be two things. One is it can confuse players because they're so used to this like sort of mechanic in PvE that then they jump into PvP, all of a sudden it's gone. So it could be confusing. On the flip side of that, could you imagine PvP with just freaking telegraphs everywhere, painting all over the place in a big fight? Like it would just be like a mess. Like you wouldn't see anything except for like arrows and cones and circles and this. And it would be like I think it would be completely like confusing. Honestly, additionally, I think any PvPer would immediately discredit the PvP system uh, for broadcasting that information. 
the League of Legends is a great example. There's a lot of skill shots in League of Legends that are based around predicting where your player is going to be and not having them realize you're predicting their movements. The moment you broadcast where you're targeting and where your spell's going to your enemies in a PvP situation, you've given them all the information that they need to potentially avoid your attack. Now, I don't 100% think that, that maybe there's not that, that spell delay or, or the ability to dodge like there is in League, but I think that would take a mass majority. I mean, some may argue that the, by adding this system, it, it opens it up. It's like, okay, well, now not only are you playing the game, but you're, you gotta be smart to, to watch the stuff on the ground to dodge it. But I think, honestly, like there's coming from, from a previous uh, very hardcore PvP, you know, arena team, I don't, I, I feel like that takes away that, that your, your focus should be on your team, who you're bursting, how you need to move, where your healer is. There, there's already so much going on. Um, and I think that, that again, like I said, to broadcast your attack to your enemy, what your strategy is, is unnecessary and takes away from the, the fluidity of, of player versus player, but that's just, that's yeah, just the competitive my nature. Of it. I kind of agree. I mean, I've never played the, I have not had any hands on time with wildstar whatsoever. Hopefully E3. Hopefully. Um, but I kind of agree. I think for PVP is probably the right move to not show that stuff. Um, I thought I said this on, on UDSP where I was sort of like, man, I kind of want to just try it with the telegraph system. Cause I think it'd be interesting to see what PVP would feel like with it. Cause I just have no idea. It'd be weird knowing, what is happening on the on the, uh, the the opposition side, but at the same time, I think, and I also think players need to react mm, probably far too fast and quick for the system to even be able to do all that stuff. So I think it's the right move. It sounds to me like on paper, without playing it, it, it sounds like the right move that they don't have it. Why uh, do we still have the caller? He's still here. Uh, we actually just let him go to, uh, we to swap. He, yeah, yeah, we did. Get out of here, Rich. Um, I think the one last thing, though, again, um, because a lot of Wildstar devs, if I'm not mistaken, they're, they're old World of Warcraft devs, correct? Some. Some. <laughs> it's kind of built with some of the team and obviously some new people. But, I mean, we, we even see this now in World of Warcraft where uh, PvE, you'll have a bunch of mobs create spell animations that are teaching players to learn to raid and move out of stuff and, and spell animations to be looking for in PvE. But the second you step into PvP, those are gone. Anything that, that's going to be done by the player is is instant or hidden and not broadcast because it takes away. I think I think it's one of those things while also like maybe brand new players of the genre of MMO, like is this our first MMO ever, maybe slightly jarred jarred by the fact that they've seen all these telegraphs in PvE and then they jump into PvP and don't see that. I think they'll learn pretty quickly that, you know, they're playing against real people and you just gotta react. All right. Let's open up the lines again and keep this show moving. Caller, you're on the line with Game Burger After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from. Tell us your question. Uh, hi, guys. Um, I'm Cameron. I'm from Arizona. And nice I to meet you, Cameron. Say, uh, Mike, I feel your pain about the whole cheesecake thing. Uh, I, I actually, I do like cheesecake, but I hate ice cream. And the looks I get, yeah. And Gary, you thank you for thing? waiting. Oh, God. The weird thing, no, you, you go ahead. You already interrupted was, the show. The weird thing is, the weird thing about this episode is, I hate cheesecake as well. I can't this boom it. after dark is now Team Shapnit cheesecake lovers get out. No, please don't get out because I like your views and I like you guys watching the show. But I'm just saying, Team Shapnit's on the rise. We That's are all. completely right. Team Cheesecake at this point. Sorry, sir. I'm sorry you don't like ice cream now because that. Death. That is sad. that is a really Thank sad you. thing to I, I I won't judge you because I understand where you're coming from and you're trying to identify me with but you don't like ice cream I I don't know if I can take your question I'll anyway completely <laughs> judge you and tell you you're insane so go ahead and all right Gary I, I just want to say um thank you for creating Game Bigger it's an awesome site well seriously like thank you for watching <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the site can't be awesome without people watching the content I think that's a that's it's it's funny because I I think a lot of people end up turning around. We saw a lot of love coming towards Lore, and a lot of people are like, you know, Lore, thank you for making the content. It's it's great. And and I'm not saying that Lore didn't make great content, but honestly, Lore wouldn't be who he is if it wasn't for the viewers. 
Yeah, we don't. We yeah. made, we. I mean, when I first started it, it was like I don't want to say a joke, but a hobby, and I had a completely different career, and you guys liked it, and I said we have to make something for these people, and they need content, and we'll keep making it. So you guys keep watching it, we'll keep making it. Thank you so much for being a viewer because you guys are a lot more important. Yeah, well, you got a lifetime fan here, so. Well, that's awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay, so um, my question is, and uh, with you know the World of Warcraft movie coming soon, and you know the rumored Mass Effect film, and many other video game movies, why is it that Hollywood tends to make pretty crap video game films? Hmm. First off, I would say the mediums are too different. Um, video games are something that you are not only interacting with, even though, even if it's a false interactivity, you feel like you're shaping it. Even if you're on a very scripted path, you feel like you are a part of the world, which draws you in. The second part, in my opinion, is movies are, um, movies have to be set up and, and you're kind of breaking this lately. Um, for example, The Hobbit being three movies in itself, even though it's the shortest Lord of the Rings. We're starting to see this a lot more, um, Harry Potter being two movies. But movies are, are very set in their, their ways of being two and a half, three hours if you're telling something epic. But if you're going three hours, you are really pushing your audience attention base. Um, without that interactivity, I think it's harder for the, the, the movie makers to create an experience that really draws you in and makes you feel a part of the world. We have so much time playing these video games. There's, there's time that you can spend, like if, if, if I'll use Final Fantasy, um, any of the Final Fantasies as an example, there's obviously your scripted path, but I could spend 10 minutes running around a forest feeling like that's a part of the game and that's, that's telling me something when all it's doing is I'm just entering encounters and, and leveling up. It, it's enriching the world. It's making me feel like the world is living and breathing. And that's 10 minutes that I spent somewhere else that you can't really spend doing something like that in a movie. Everything has to, to keep pace and keep moving. And especially in the video world, like the moment you start to, to drag and lose attention towards, towards your audience, you're in trouble. So they have to keep something engaging and moving and something moving forward. They, they can't ever take time to, character build and story build and that's one of the reasons i greatly love um series lost that's why i greatly love anime is because you can spend an entire episode and i might hate you for making a filler episode but at the end of the series i feel i know more about the characters because i spent half an hour learning about one and learned nothing else and i think that's that's one thing that's why movies don't don't hit that that same mark or, or they feel crappy in, by comparison, uh, I don't know, Gary. Do you have any any thoughts on on the subject? I actually have a lot. I have a really optimistic outlook on video game films in the future. I think I think there's actually a lot of hope for video game or films, uh, you know, based on IPs from video games in the future. So I kind of look at it like this: think about not not long ago, comic book adaptations of films were absolutely terrible, like. Seriously, like Batman movies were awful before guys like Christopher Nolan got their hands on them and, and, and saw that they could, they could really change the landscape of what, how you could tell these stories and be dark and serious and really, you know, like telling the story of Dark Knight. Like, I'm sure a lot of people out there have read that. Like, you know, when, if you were reading Dark Knight at the time and you saw Batman come out at the time when Dark Knight came out as a, as a, as a comic book, you were like, that's not Batman. And it wasn't. And I think video games are still in that era. Like, they're still, they're still in that place where it's like it hasn't, they haven't found the right directors and they haven't really, like, really set home yet to really take it as serious as they actually can be. So I think the future is actually going to be really good. I think, I think when, I don't know, I think, I think a company like Blizzard, I think the reason why we're seeing such a delay on the World of Warcraft movie and, and all the things they're going through, I think, I don't really think it's because it's like a mess or like a lot of gamers think, like, you know, it's never going to come out. Like, I honestly think it's because they probably really want their film to be in that in that caliber of like you know yeah. Iron Man movies and Batman movies like like what they're what they're doing with storytelling now is so different than what they did just a few years ago. Even the type, even the way writers and directors are telling stories is so completely different. Whether it's television or film, it's very different, right? Even like um, 
what was it just uh, like the Superman movie that's like it's coming out, right? It's like they're telling these slivers of stories that are very different, very serious, and very like adult kind of, you know. And and I think back what we're used to with the video game movies is like they're kind of treated as like secondhand trash and just like it's goofy and like whatever. I think you're gonna see that change. I think you're gonna see that change in the next like two to three years, and I think you're gonna see like some amazing movies come out based on video games. Well, and on the topic of comics and and video games, one second and I'll let you go. On the topic of comics and video games, considering kind of what I was even saying about how it doesn't take time to build, I personally think that the Avengers was as epic as it was, was because each of the Avengers had their own individual movie. Avengers got to spend the time being fun and exciting and, and telling you all the really awesome stuff. And you got your character development as to who these superheroes were if you took the time to watch the movies previous. So I think something like that is a perfect I mean, example really of how you can flesh out those extra stories. Really what it's going to take, it's going to take some happy accident of a video game company teaming up with the right director, the right team, the right production company, putting out the right film for the rest of Hollywood to take notice. That's, what's gonna, it, that's what needs to happen. Like one really amazing blockbuster, possibly the World of Warcraft movie, you know, we'll set the precedent, and then all of a sudden we're going to see, like, you know, the League of Legends movie. I mean, you know, you just, I think it'll snowball after the fact, because it'll open the eyes of a lot of Hollywood people to see, like, wow, there's some really amazing stories to tell here. Done. Correct. Yeah. So, Cameron, I, 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 I cut you off. What were you going to say? I was just, I was going to agree with Gary. I, I, I think, yeah, definitely the World of Warcraft movie, the, the reason why they keep delaying it is because they want it to be good. And I think that's also happening with the Mass Effect movie whatever you think about Mass Effect 3, but you know they, they have said several times in interviews, we just want it to be good. We don't want it to be the I mean, standard comic book film. Are you a Mass film. Effect fan? I am a huge Mass Effect fan. I mean, I am how a huge... fucking awesome could an amazing, Ma- like, like a Mass Effect film done the right way could be like, you know, our, you know, 2001. Like, it could be on the next Star Wars if they did it right. Like, it is, I, it is so ready to be that good. I agree, they and they should they should totally set it in the first contact wars prior to the game so they don't have to worry about screwing up the game. Yeah. Um, so here's you have with the game. Sorry. Well, no, here's here's the one, here's the one other thing that I have this conversation a lot when I talk about movies and video games is I personally feel video game movies plot suck. Video game movies in terms of representing and encapsulating the ideology of the game do an incredible job. Silent Hill that the eh, not so much the second one i'll still give it a little bit of praise but especially the first silent hill did a great job of transcribing what that game was to film a great job and i think it's one of the best video game adaptations because of that but my question to you guys is why don't and and i I get it I, i understand the argument but let's just talk about it for a minute why don't we see movies Telling the exact story from the video game. I get that that maybe the 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 pitch That's is a that people slope. But but let's not pretend like the people who played these games and loved them would not enjoy them emphatically to same see the same exact story transcribed on screen because they would. And at the same time, you wouldn't get the backlash and the hate for taking what was uh, this beloved story and ripping it to shreds by trying to make it it its own adaptation. I think you can I make specific uh, changes. I, I'm not saying you can't do it. What I'm going to say is I think it's a slippery slope because I, I think two things have happened. I think storytelling is, is, is I really do believe storytelling has changed in the past like 10 years a lot, right? In TV and, and in film, it's just, it's changed. It's different, you know, especially in TV. Think about before like shows like Battlestar Galactica and things like that. Like we didn't see that kind of like, character profile like telling little slivers of stories and really kind of getting into like you know characters lives like on a, on a really detailed level and then we saw things like that start happening i don't know i think i i'm not saying you can't do it i'm just saying that like going to a writer and kind of putting those parameters around them could also be disaster that's i guess that's how i could leave it like i i could imagine like going in and saying like you have to tell the story of vanilla world of warcraft and that's it tell that story or or lich king just tell that story that that's what you have to tell i think i don't know that i don't know if that i don't know maybe that writer has a better story in him. like maybe and then and, and i think to like sort of be like this is what you have to do here the parameters i don't know 
Here's the here's the one the one good example that I'll say did this did did a perfect job of adapting a pre, uh, a previously defined IP, copying it almost in some in some cases shot for shot, um, but still at the same time changing things that wouldn't work on screen and still made a great piece. Scott Pilgrim. There are there are comic strips and and comic frames that look exactly like the movie. For the sure. most part, up until about three fourths of the movie, it's exactly following the manga, and then it takes a little bit, or a graphic novel, and then it takes a yeah, little bit of a I shift mean, towards the end. But it, but oh, it, man, but it's I mean, still great novel, in both forms. But a graphic novel is more like a shot list than like a, a, a MMO, right? Like I mean, True. MMO is it's huge. A, a graphic novel could almost be like a director's like you know, uh, concept art and, and shot list for for a show. So I don't know. I. I think they could do it. I think a lot of people want that. A lot of times, I don't. I, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, Batman did it right. They did Dark Knight. I mean, they did a really good adaptation of it. So, I don't know. Could you encapsulate like an entire like? Could you encapsulate Vanilla Val or like you know Wrath of the Lich King like all the entire thing into a movie? No, absolutely not. Well, who's going to do that? You gotta make a television show. Maybe it's called Warcraft. How do you how do you make a show about Warcraft lore? And make it engaging. Hmm. That would be interesting. That would be interesting. I'd love to see it. I'd watch it. Um, is that all you got for us? That's all I got. Thank you guys so much. Wonderful. Thank hey, you so you much. Help. Thanks for calling in. No Unfortunately, uh, that's going to do it for this week's episode of After Dark. Thank you guys. Oh, wait. Why isn't that playing? Maybe. We're done uh, already? Wow. It's been an it's hour. Been it's been it's been going on for about an hour, guys. Follow Gary again. It, it is a fun show, and it's unpredictable. That's the best part of it. You just talk, I and, like it, the, uh, and I like the uh, the storeroom. I might come back yeah. to, the, to, the, to the storage room and have a beer and just do the show with you again. Wonderful. Well, we'll uh, we'll bring you back on next week, then I guess, as long as you stay back away from echo distance. Echo, and echo. follow Gary again right down there at Gary Gannon, and check out everything over here at Game Breaker TV. You follow me right here at Mike Schaffnitz. We do the show live every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. PDT. While you're at it, guys, go check out this awesome new YouTube channel I started called How to Play. Quick little funny one-minute videos about video game stereotypes. I'd love some love over there, so if you guys have a moment, go check Dude. that out. What? We didn't, we, didn't do the, we didn't do the commercial break. Hey, guys, be sure to go check out... Audible.com slash game break. Here, we'll even stop. I completely, completely forgot. We didn't have Eduardo calling. Do you want to know what it is? That's exactly what it is. Typically, the commercial break always comes for Eduardo's Corner. It's saved that way because it's branded as Eduardo's Corner commercial break. So, because we don't have... Hey, I heard my echo. Uh, because we didn't get Eduardo calling in. Guys, if you guys haven't checked out Audible.com... Uh, we've got an awesome deal going going on over there. Audible.com slash gamebreaker. You guys can get a free audiobook. Um Gary, you said that they've got some really awesome World of Warcraft books over there, I think, right now. They have at least three World of Warcraft books, which I highly recommend. They're awesome. There's there's so much good fantasy stuff for like MMO players. There's there's literally a ton. Um there's a bunch of Star Wars books, which I recently started looking at, um, including even some about Star Wars Zero Public, which out of the game. Uh, they got those. The Neverwinter series, another Dungeons and Dragons amazing series that just came on not that long ago. And um, I gotta say, the other one I keep recommending, of course, because of this week's episode and my Facebook exploding Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones on Audible is amazing. That might be a great way for me to try and catch up. Uh, you know, you've talked about it before about being able to, to listen to these things on the road, and that's obviously such a great downtime i mean a lot of times that's that's where i like taking my phone calls uh hands free of course that's where you know you'll listen to music you just get, kind of get some time where you're not going it's anywhere sometimes. so why not pop I'll in be, some audiobooks i'll be driving home and be like at a really good point in like one of these books especially when they have a really good narrator like the game of thrones books and i'll literally like drive around like my streets and my block like six more times because i want to finish this section before i park <laughs> true story why not 10 hours and 5 minutes, you could have it read, read to you. It's that simple, guys. Just head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. You guys will get a free 30-day trial as well as a free audiobook. Uh, 
Um, that does it for this week's episode of After Dark. Guys, be sure to head on over to uh, Game Breaker TV to check us out. We also got a brand new free-to-play website, free-to-play.tv. A lot of new yes. content, a lot of new shows. It's getting crazy over here. You guys are going to see a whole lot more coming your way, so keep it tuned right here. We'll see you guys next week. See y'all!